Hello everyone, I'm Than from Tidal Gardens. Today, I'll be talking about some of the most colorful and diverse corals out there, zoanthids and paleothelas. If you spend any time shopping for these corals, you cannot help but come across the multitude of quote-unquote trade names for the different color morphs. These names range from clever to downright silly. At first I wasn't a big fan of them as I thought that they were kind of a gimmick to raise the price of corals, and to some extent, this is still true. People actually do tend to spend more money on named corals. Lately, however, I've been warming a bit to them because no matter how silly they sound, they're actually helpful for identification. Let's take this zoanthid for example. If I were to describe it as a zoanthid with red tentacles and concentric red and blue rings with a blue center, several different corals might actually come to mind. Now, if I called it by its trade name, a safe cracker, only one coral comes to mind. Fun names aside, zoanthids and paleothoa come in hundreds of different colors, so let's get to propagating them. I like to grab a tool to break the rocks the zoanthids are growing on, such as these bone cutters. The next item to grab is either a pair of scissors or a scalpel to do the actual cutting of the polyps. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'll be using scissors, but any sharp blade will do. When we choose a colony for propagation, we like to start with one with about 50 or so heads, and typically we cut it down to about 10 frags or so. Theoretically, you can start a culture with a single polyp, but the corals tend to do a lot better when there's at least five together. So what I'm doing here is breaking up the substrate the zoanthids are growing on. Once the rock is broken up, it's good for the corals to be stuck to small pieces because that makes them easier to glue later and less likely to break off the new substrate. Now we take our trusty scissors and cut the coral into five to seven polyp pieces. You do have to be careful at this step because some zoanthids and paleothoa contain a very potent toxin called paleotoxin. It is a milky white substance that can make you violently ill if it gets into your bloodstream. After cutting, we dry the new frags on paper towels. Zoanthids and paleothoa are very resistant to dryness. Some come from reefs in which they are exposed to air during low tide for hours. At this stage, there's really no need to worry about them. Next, we have to choose what to glue the cuttings to. For most home aquariums, a natural piece of live rock should do just great. For propagators such as myself, however, we either like to use a plug or a disc. Now we use discs to grow colonies we plan to propagate later, and we use plugs to grow colonies we plan on selling. If you've seen any of our other videos, you would know that we're a big fan of inexpensive gel superglue. We go through tons of this stuff each week. The nice thing about plugs is that they're easily organized on egg crate shelves such as this. And now we're all done. Back into the water they go. Thanks again for watching, and if you like these videos, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also, if you're big into social networking like I am, please join Tidal Gardens on Facebook.